again, my little yarnivores and spiderettes. Fiber Spider back again with another tutorial just for you. And today I've got an awesome textured hat for you. This is the embossed diamonds hat. Mm -hmm. It is nice and toasty. And once you get the hang of the repeat, it's really quite simple and it works up fast. By the way, this video is sponsored by Lion Brand. Thank you very much, Lion Brand, for your continued support over the years. And thank you for joining me today. Also, this pattern for the hat will be available on my Etsy store. And the links to the yarn as well as to the pattern will be available in the description box down below. So check out those links. Mm -hmm. So for this particular hat, I used Lion Brand's Pound of Love in the colorway of quartz. And for today's piece, we're going to be using Pound of Love in the colorway of Oxford Gray. Now, as far as hook sizes, well, you may need to go up or down a hook size based on your gauge. However, what I found what worked for me is for the majority of the hat, I used a size J, six millimeter hook. And for the the brim at the bottom, the ribbing, I used a size H, five millimeter hook. Use what works best for you, as I always say. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, round one. So starting with your size J hook, or just the bigger of the two, going to start off with a slip knot as per usual, and a chaining of four. Slip stitch to that first chain to create a ring. And chain up two. Now this chaining up of two does not count as an actual stitch, just gives us the height that we need. So into this center ring, nine double crochets. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And then to finish up your round, slip stitch into the top of the first double crochet that we made. Ignore this chaining of two. So into the top, slip stitch right on in. And there you go. And then of course you can cinch up your tail and sew in your ends at any point that you like. And that is the end of Round one. Okay, round two. Going to start again by chaining up of two, but again, that this is only used to give us the height that we need. It's not actually counting as a double crochet. And just like right here was our previous chaining of two. So around our first double crochet, this one right here, not this one, this one, going to do two front post double crochets. So around the post, not into the top, but around the post, two front post double crochets. And you might want to do these a little bit loose so that it's easier to work with them later. So two front post double crochets around the front first post, and then two around the next post, and so on and so forth. So we're going to be increasing from nine stitches to 18 stitches. We're doubling our stitch count. And then two around the next post. And then two around the next. 
and so on and so forth for the entire round. And what I like about this pattern is that as opposed to sort of a band of texture around the body of the hat, the texture goes all the way up to the crown. I like sort of homogeny with patterns when they cover the entire thing. And that's what I was aiming for with this particular piece. Okay, and we're almost to the end. And then one more. And because, well, some people, they err on the side of caution. I err on the side of paranoia, so I always like to double count. So two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, and 18. Perfect. Okay, so finishing off round two by doing a slip stitch into the top of the first front post double crochet that we did. Slip stitch. And there you go. That's the end of round two. Round three. Okay, we're still increasing. So start off by chaining up of two. Again, just to give us the height. And around that first front post, going to do another front post double crochet. And then in between our front posts, do a double crochet, just right in between the stitches. And then front post around the front post. And then in between the stitches, a double crochet, front post around the front post. double crochet in between the stitches, front post around the front post, double crochet in between the stitches, and this will make our stitch count at the end, this will make the stitch count from 18 stitches to 36 stitches. So just keep on keeping on by doing a front post around the front post, and then a double crochet in between those posts all the way around. So far, not too bad, huh? Don't worry, the fun stuff comes later. Okay, getting there. Right now it's pouring rain outside and I love that sound. It's one of my favorite things. Going out in it, no thank you, but being inside all nice and warm and snuggy, nothing better. Okay, and we are almost to the end of the round. Okay, now I'm almost there. So front post around the front post, double in between, front post around the front post, and then one more in between this front post and then this technical front post. 
So in between there, pull out just a little bit more yarn. There we go. And double crochet in between those stitches and then slip stitch into the top of this first front post that we did. And there you go. That is the end of round three. Got that beautiful texture already. Okay, so round four, we're going to be increasing again, and we're going to be going from 36 stitches to 54 stitches. So we are increasing at a pretty rapid rate. So start by chaining up two and front post around the front post. And then that double crochet stitch that we made, two double crochet stitches into that double crochet. And then front post around the front post. And then two double crochets into the double crochet stitch. And it's really quite straightforward for this round. Just front post around the front post. And then two double crochets into each double crochet. Front post around the front post. and then two double crochets into the double crochet and do this all the way around. And then when you have reached the end, over here you would have your front post around the front post, two double crochets into the double crochet, and then slip stitch to the top of your first front post double crochet stitch. And that is how you would do round four. So I'll meet back up with you for the next round. Be right back. Round five. Okay, so this is going to be the last of the increase rounds going from 54 stitches all the way up to 72 stitches. It's going to be very easy. Start by chaining up of two, front post around the front post, And then we have our two double crochets. So double crochet into the first double crochet. And then double crochet in between our double crochets. And then double crochet into the second double crochet. So we went from one to two to three. Front post around the front post. double into the first double, double in between the doubles, and then double into the second double. Front post around the front post. I think I missed something there. Give me one moment. Front post around the front post. There we go. Double into the first double. Double in between the doubles. And then double into the second double. Front post around the front post. Double into the first double double in between the doubles, double into the second double. And that's all you have to do for the rest of this round. So we're still maintaining the front posts. We're just increasing in between. So keep doing this all the way around. And around here, you would have your last front post double, double into the double, double in between the doubles, double into the second double, and then slip stitch to the top of that first front post double crochet. And that'll be the end of round five. So I'll see you in a bit. I'll finish this up off camera and I'll meet back up with you for round six. Okay, round six. 
like I said, the last round was the last of the increase rounds, but we did a lot of increasing in a hurry. So this round, it's going to be sort of a way for the hat to catch up with itself. So we're going to start by chaining up two front post around the front post. And then in the next three double crochets, just double crochet into each stitch. And what I mean by having the pattern catch up with itself, this sort of relaxes the increase while still maintaining the pattern. So we've got our front post, our three doubles, then front post around the front post, and then double into the next three stitches. And then front post around the front post, and then double into each of the next three stitches. So we're pretty much just following suit with what we did previously, but without the increasing. Just front post around the front posts and double in the doubles. It's that easy. And the next round is gonna be even easier. I'm sure you're gonna love it. So. Just keep on keeping on in the same fashion, doing your front posts around the front posts, doubles in the doubles, all the way around. So back here, you would front post around your front post, double crochet into the next three stitches. Again, I'm gonna say this, you know, be careful not to utilize this chaining up of two, just ignore it. And so after doing your front post and your three doubles, slip stitch into the top of that first front post double crochet and that will be the end of round six so i'll meet back up with you for round seven back in a flash round seven okay so like i said this round is going to be very very easy so start by chaining up two and in every stitch, we're just going to be double crocheting. So regardless of whether it's a front post or a regular double crochet stitch, just double crochet in each stitch. Now, again, this does not count as a double crochet. So into that first stitch, double crochet. And double crochet into each of the three stitches, just as normal. and then double crochet into the top of that front post double crochet. Now, the reason why we're doing this is because we are preparing ourselves for the sort of, you know, the diamond embossing that will be going on starting in the next round. But for right now, we're just sort of priming the canvas, as it were. We're getting things ready and prepared for when we start doing the embossing, which, quite frankly, is my favorite part of this pattern. But, you know, you got to do the prep work first. So right now, it's just doing a double crochet into each stitch all the way around. And when you reach the end, so here, you know, you have your your front post, you know, just double into the top, and then the next three. Do not confuse this right here as an extra stitch because that's our chain two. So it's good to use this as your guide. So double crochet, one, and then the next three, one, two, three, and then slip stitch into the top of this first official double crochet. Alrighty. And so I will meet back up with you for the next round. Round eight. Okay, so for round eight, this is where the fun stuff happens. This is the magic of this pattern. So now keep in mind, we have our two front post double crochets that align with our double crochets right above and then three in the center. This middle one, that is the one that we need to focus on. So keep that in mind. Now, 
I'm going to start by chaining up one, single crochet into that first stitch and the next stitch. The first stitch accounts for the front post. The next stitch is the first of the three double crochets. Now that center one, that is the one that we're going to be essentially omitting by creating. It's going to be a little bit weird at first, but you'll get the hang of it. It is doing two front post treble crochets together around these posts. Don't worry, I'll walk you through it. So yarning over twice and then going doing a front post treble around this front post here. So pulling through, and then pulling through two, pulling through two, but don't finish up that stitch, no. Now we yarn over twice again, going through the next post, pulling up a loop, pull through two, pull through two, and then pull through all three. So we did our two treble crochets, our two front post treble crochets together. Okay, and also you might want to do this a little bit on the loose side so that your piece does not end up puckering. Okay, now after doing this, because we created a stitch, we have to omit a stitch. Now, so we did our last single crochet right into this stitch. This is that middle stitch. We need to skip that stitch, okay? And so we're going to be doing our next single crochet stitch into this stitch. We're skipping that one and going into the next one, okay? And we're going to be doing this all the way around, but my yarn was in front. All right, now it's behind. So skipping that stitch, going into the next stitch, with a single crochet and then two more for a total of three. So one, two, and three. And so you can see here, this is our front post here and the double on top. One, two, that's the middle one. And we just did that one. So again, we are in alignment to skip this middle stitch because we're going to do our two front post treble crochets together again all the way around. So from here, yarning over twice and going around the, the post that we just went around. Pulling up a loop, pull through two, pull through two, but don't finish, yarning over twice, going into the next post, pull up a loop, pull through two, pull through two, and then pull through all three. So we're basically creating upside down Vs. Got our first one, or got our second one, and again, skipping this stitch right here because we went into this stitch. You can see where the stitch goes in with that single crochet. So skipping the next one, this one here, skipping that one, going into the next one with a single crochet and two more single crochets for a total of three. And this is our middle one once again. So yarning over twice, going around the post that we just went around with a front post treble. So, whoop, got my two yarn overs. Going around the post, pull up a loop, pull through two, pull through two, hold it, yarning over twice, going into the next post, pull up a loop, pull through two, pull through two, then pull through all three. Pull out some more yarn. And 
and skipping the next stitch, going into that next one with a single crochet and two more for a total of three single crochets, yarning over twice, going around the post, pulling up a loop, pull through two, pull through two, yarning over twice, going around the next post, pull up a loop, pull through two, pull through two, pull through all three, And it does help if you sort of turn your work because you can see that we did that stitch. So we're skipping this stitch, going into the next three stitches with single crochets. One, two, three, yarning over twice, going into the post, pulling up a loop, pull through two, pull through two, yarning over twice, going into the next post, pull up a loop, pull through two, pull through two, pull through all three. Skip the next stitch, going to the next three stitches. One, two, three, yarning over twice, Going around the post, pull up a loop, pull through two, pull through two, yarning over twice, going into the next post, pull up a loop, pull through two, pull through two, pull through all three. Skip the next stitch, going into the next three stitches with singles, one, two and three, yarning over twice, going around the post, pulling up that loop, pull through two, pull through two, yarning over twice, going into the next post, pull up a loop, pull through two, pull through two, pull through all three, skip the next stitch, Going to the next three with singles. One, two, and three. Okay. And you know what? I think I'd like to do the rest of this round off camera since you have a basis for it. But what I am going to do though is when I get closer to the end, I'm going to meet back up with you because of the the end is a little bit different. So I'm gonna meet back up with you when I'm at about here, and then we'll finish up round eight together. Alrighty. Okay, so I'm almost done with round eight. I just have a couple more upside down Vs to do, but I wanted to do them with you. So I already did my last V and my three singles. So yarning over twice, going around the post, up a loop, pull through two and two, yarning over twice, go through the next front post, pull up a loop, pull through two and two, and then all three, skipping a stitch, going into the next three stitches with singles, one, two, three, yarning over twice, going around the post, pull through two and two, yarning over twice, go through the next post, pull up a loop, pull through two, pull through two, pull through three, skip the next stitch, going into the next three stitches with single crochets, one, two, and three. Okay, so we are at the last of the upside down V's for the round. So yarning over twice, going around that post that we just went around, pull up a loop, pull through two, 
through two, yarning over twice, and then going around the first post that we went around and pull up a loop, pull through two, pull through two, pull through all three, still skipping that one stitch, single crochet into just one stitch. Now, the reason why only one is because we started the round by chaining up one and doing two single crochets. Well, this last single crochet, well, that's the third. So now being careful not to slip stitch into that chain one. We have our join here and then we've got one and two. So into this first single crochet right here, slip stitch into that first single crochet stitch. And there you go. And that is the end of round eight. So your piece should look something like this, I hope, <laughs> with all these V's, half finished diamonds all the way around. And that is round eight. Okay. Round nine. It's going to be considerably easier than the last round, I assure you. All right. So like we did for, it was what, round seven, where we were just doing double crochets for sort of priming the background canvas. Well, we're going to be doing that again by chaining up two and then doing a double crochet into each stitch all the way around, but with a slight exception when we reach the treble crochet joins there. So after doing your chaining up of two, double crochet into the first two stitches, one and two. Now, when you reach your junction, if you will, we are going to be doing a double crochet, but instead of just going into the top underneath those two, you know, two loops there, those two uh, strands, instead of doing that, which would leave it looking open, I think, looks kind of open, don't you think? So instead of that, what I suggest is doing your double crochet underneath here. So scooting underneath there and do your double crochet underneath all four of those. It's sort of like how you always say going underneath both loops of the V. Well, both sets of Vs in this case. And I think it looks a lot neater. Okay. Then double crochet into each of the next three doubles. Sorry, three singles that we had made. Pardon a moi. So three doubles. And then again, going underneath into here with your double crochet stitch. And then three doubles into the singles that we had made. And then going underneath both sets of these with a double crochet and then double into the next three singles. And then double underneath both sets of these. Double into each of the next three singles. and so on and so forth all the way around. And of course I have a knot. <laughs> it's bound to happen sooner or later, right? There we go, no big deal. All right, so keep doing this all the way around until you reach the beginning. So you would end up by doing, you know, your, your join and your 
three doubles, your join, and one double crochet into this last single that we did on the previous round. And then you would do a slip stitch join to the top of this first double crochet that we did. All right, so that will conclude round nine. All righty. Round 10. Okay, so we're going to be doing another round where we're creating these. Now, if you remember when we did this round, I emphasized the importance of the middle stitch. Well, technically, we're already in the middle stitch because if you look at the alignment of where these joins are, and then the three in the middle, we've got one and two, and then this is the third, the middle stitch. Okay, now the chaining of two, again, that does not count. I can't emphasize that enough. So since we're already in the middle, don't do any chaining, don't do any single crocheting. Now we're gonna hop right in, but instead of going underneath just one post like we did down here, we're going underneath both legs of the Vs. So hop right in by yarning over twice and then go underneath both legs, pull up a loop, pull through two, pull through two, yarning over twice, go underneath both legs of the next V and pull up a loop, pull through two, pull through two, pull through all three and we have created our first diamond. Now, because we did not move anywhere initially, where we started, that counts as the stitch that we skip, okay? At least right now, all right? So going directly into the next three stitches with single crochets, one, two, and three. And if you look at the alignment, that is our middle stitch, which is exactly where we want to be because it aligns with the front post directly down below. Okay, so from here, yarn over twice, go underneath both legs once again, and pull up a loop. Pull through two, pull through two, yarning over twice, go underneath both legs, pull through your loop, pull through two, pull through two, pull through all three. Okay, now we are skipping. So we went into this stitch right here, skip that next stitch, and then go into the next three with single crochets. So it essentially follows suit with the first time that we did this technique, but it's just, it's shifted. It's, you know, scooted over just a little bit so that we're actually creating diamonds as opposed to a series of Vs. They're just altered, you know, they're just, you know, aligned differently, that's all. So again, we are in alignment. You know, this is our double, our middle double aligned with the front post down below. So yarning over twice, go underneath both legs of the V, pull up a loop, pull through two, pull through two, yarning over twice, go underneath the next two legs, pull up a loop, pull through two, pull through two, pull through all three, skip the next stitch, going to the next three with single crochets, one, two, three, yarning over twice, going underneath both legs, pull up that loop, pull through two, pull through two, yarning over twice, 
go under the next two legs, pull up a loop, pull through two, pull through two, pull through all three, skip that stitch, going into the next three with single, whoa, whoa, hang on, hello, thank you. <laughs> Skip that stitch, going into the next three stitches with single crochets. One, two, three, yarning over twice, going underneath both legs, pull through two, pull through two, yarning over twice, go underneath the next two legs, pull up, through two, through two, through all three, skip that next stitch, next three stitches, single crochet, one, two, and three. Okay, so I'm going to do the majority of the round off camera, but again, I will meet back up with you around here or so, so that we can finish up this round together. All right, I'll see you in a bit. Just go slow, breathe. Breathing is good, oxygen is your friend. I know this is different and this looks a little intimidating, but you can do this. You can pause, you can rewind, it's okay. And you can breathe. <laughs> All right, I will see you around here or so, okay? Be right back. Okay, so we're almost done with round 10. I did my join and my three singles. I'm gonna hop right in with my yarning over twice, going underneath both legs, pull up a loop, pull through two, pull through two, yarning over twice, go through the next two legs, pull up a loop, Pull through two, pull through two, pull through all three. There we are. Skip that stitch, going into the next three stitches with single crochets. Yarning over twice. There we are. Going underneath both legs, pull up a loop. Pull through two. Pull through two, yarning over twice. Okay, we reached the end, so go underneath both of those legs. And there we go. Pull up that loop. Pull through two, pull through two, pull through all three. And skip the next stitch three single crochets, one, two, and three. And then for our slip stitch, slip stitch, just as we had done previously with our double crochets, slip stitch underneath, not just the top, but underneath both sets of Vs for the join for our slip stitch. catch all four of those loops with our slip stitch like so there you go <laughs> and that is the end of round 10 really starting to come together and at this point your hat should look something like this all righty All right, my dear, so that concludes the first part of the embossed diamonds hat tutorial. I really hope you're liking it. And again, thank you to Lion Brand for sponsoring this video. Thank you for joining me. And again, the pattern for this will be available on my Etsy shop. Mm -hmm. So you know what to do until next time, right? I want all of you to stay inspired, stay caffeinated, stay stitching, and please stay safe. Take care of yourselves 
and each other. And I will see you in my next video. And stay tuned because part two is going to be coming out shortly. See you in the next one. Bye for now.